Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com, and today I'm gonna to be showing you the parts you need to build a mid to high-end video editing PC for approximately $1,500 in 2021. This build is going to make it easy to edit 4K or 6K video in Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, or basically any other video editing software other than Final Cut, which is Mac only. And as a side note, if you want to edit photos or mix music or even game and stream, this is going to be a fantastic choice for you. I'm also gonna be showing you some upgraded parts that you can buy that will increase your cost, but have the potential to drastically improve the speed of your editing. Now, there are two quick things we need to talk about before we talk about the parts for this build. First, all of the parts for this build will be linked down in the video description, and will also be on my kit page, where they will be nicely organized for you to check out. Second, this build is just going to detail the parts you need to purchase, not how to put them together. I have good news though. I made a video a while back detailing exactly how to put together a video editing PC from opening up the boxes all the way to turning it on. And those instructions will still apply to this build as well. It's not hard, it's kind of like building Legos. I will link to that video in the corner and down in the video description. Also, incidentally, if you decide you want to spend less, I will link down below to my budget build guide that will show you how to build a cheaper 4K video editing PC for 750 bucks. And I will also link to my monster $2,000 dollar video editing PC build if you have a larger budget too. Now it's time to jump into this $1,500 video editing PC build and let's start with the CPU. The brain of the computer here is arguably the most important part because the more cores and threads your computer has, the faster your videos will edit and render. I would recommend purchasing the Ryzen 7 3700X processor, which has eight cores and 12 threads for quite a reasonable price of around $320. In my opinion, this processor is the sweet spot of power to performance in 2021. But I hear you saying, Matt, the sweet spot is great and all, but what else you got? Is there something more powerful that won't completely break the bank? All right. If you have an extra 230-ish dollars, I would go with the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X processor, which is going to take you from eight cores and 16 threads to 12 cores and 24 threads of performance. This is a stellar CPU and should easily be able to handle 4K, 6K, 8K, no matter the Ks, this thing should handle it. Moving on, let's talk about cooling for both these CPUs. The great news is that the 3700X comes with a stock air cooler in the box to keep it cool. In all my research, it looks like this is a good cooler, so I would save your money on buying an aftermarket option. The Ryzen 5900X, on the other hand, unfortunately does not come with an included cooler. So to cool your CPU, I would invest in the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo air cooler. This is a much loved cooler, but if you decide you want to water cool your PC instead, I'll link to other cooling options down in the video description. Moving on, let's talk about the motherboard. This is what's going to hold your CPU, RAM, graphics card, etc., and make them all work together. I would recommend purchasing the MSI MPG B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard. This motherboard is feature packed and it includes Wi-Fi built in, which is awesome. The one thing I want you to know is that if you go with the upgraded Ryzen 9 5900X CPU, there is a chance that you may need to update the motherboard BIOS to make it work. If it sounds like I'm speaking a foreign language now, do not worry. All you will need is a USB flash drive and another computer that you can use to download a file to. Use a friend's computer if you don't have one. Then it is very simple to update the motherboard BIOS for the CPU. And to help walk you through that, I will link to a video below that will show you every step. Next, let's talk about RAM, not GOATS, RAM, AKA memory what your computer needs to access your programs. For RAM, I would recommend purchasing a minimum of 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM at 3200 megahertz. I had 32 gigabytes of RAM in my editing desktop for years, and it was enough to handle 4K footage. I want you to be aware though, that I did notice that my computer was starting to run out of RAM when I was editing and rendering higher resolution footage. It would also run out of RAM when I rendered 4K videos that were longer, think 20 minutes or more in length. To prevent prevent yourself from running out of RAM, if you find yourself often rendering longer 4K videos or videos that are higher resolution than 4K, I would purchase 64 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM at 3200 megahertz instead. That should be 
plenty for video editing. Next, you have the SSD, which is where you're going to store your operating system and any programs you want to use with your computer. The best price to size and performance option is going to come from Samsung with their one terabyte 970 Evo for around 140 bucks. If you need more space and have the budget though, I would recommend upgrading to the two terabyte version of this drive extra space is always a good thing. Please do keep in mind that I only recommend using the SSD to store your programs. For the fastest video editing speed, it's best to have one SSD that holds your programs and another SSD or regular hard drive to store your video files. If you're someone that travels a lot like me, I would recommend purchasing an external hard drive or SSD to store your video files on as you edit. Alternatively, this computer's case will support internal hard drives and SSDs, so you could go that route too. I'll be sure to link to hard drives and SSDs that I recommend, both internal and external, down in the video description. Moving on, it's now time to talk about one of the most exciting parts of a computer, the graphics card. And this is where this build video is going to be different from PC build guides that I've made in the past. See, there have been a ton of awesome graphics cards that have been released recently, but there are major issues in the supply chain and many companies are having difficulty keeping cards in stock. It's really a perfect storm of a shortage of workers building these cards due to the pandemic, everyone staying home and wanting to play computer games, which is also due to the pandemic, cryptocurrency mining, which is always an issue with graphics cards. And unfortunately, there are also scalpers out there that are buying up most of the graphics cards as soon as they're in stock and then turning around and selling them on eBay at a massive price markup, usually double or triple the MSRP. Because of all of these issues, it's quite difficult to buy a graphics card for a reasonable price these days, which makes buying a video editing computer without completely breaking the bank even more difficult. Don't worry though, I am here to help you save money. So here's what I'm going to do in this video. In the past, I've recommended one particular brand and model of graphics card because cards would usually stay in stock. But now, instead of just one brand and model, I'm going to recommend to you several brands and models of card. And so when you're buying a graphics card, you have the maximum chance of being able to find one in stock for a reasonable price. So here are my graphics card recommendations. First, let's talk brands. When you're looking for a graphics card, you're going to see a lot of brands like Asus, MSI, EVGA, Gigabyte, Zotac, PNY, there are a ton. In my experience for video editing, it doesn't make a huge difference which brand you buy from. And with this shortage, we're more concerned with actually finding a card in stock. So if you find a card from any of the above brands, I'd say you're probably good to go as long as the card doesn't have a ton of horrible reviews online. So if all of those manufacturers are pretty good, which specific model of card should you buy? I've got three cheaper options for you and three more expensive options. Starting with cheaper, I would recommend the NVIDIA RTX 3070 and AMD RX 5700 and 5700 XT. These cards have an MSRP of $400 to $500 and should perform very well for video editing. If you can find them in stock new and not being sold for an outrageous price, I think they're great. But if you have more to spend and want more power, because who doesn't want more power? In that case, I would consider the AMD 6800, 6800 XT, and NVIDIA RTX 3080. These cards retail for approximately $580 to $700. So just like the cheaper options, I would wait until you can get one of these for close to those prices and you should be good. I will link below to all the cards I just talked about that are in stock, but I can't guarantee they'll stay in stock because these things change literally from out to hour. Because stock can be so hard to keep up with, I would recommend setting up stock alerts at Amazon, Newegg, and B&H so you can be notified as soon as they come back in stock. In addition, if you live close to a micro center or Best Buy and can go in person to the store, there is a much better chance that you may be able to find one in stock at a physical location. Last thing about graphics cards. If you find a store that has them in stock, please come back to this video and leave a comment telling others so they can filter by new comments and hopefully buy one too. Almost finished with this build. We need to talk about the power supply and case. And let's start with the case that you'll put all these parts inside. I'm actually going to recommend you buy the same case that I recommended in my budget build video, the NZXT H510. It's a beautiful case that doesn't look too flashy. And when I'm building a computer, I've learned that I would rather spend my money on a cheaper case with good airflow and save the rest for the components inside the case. 
case. If you want to go crazy though, there are much more expensive options out there that do look very cool. I'm also aware that there are some of you out there that want a case that has a 5.25 inch drive bay, so you can have an internal Blu-ray or DVD burner. Personally, I would rather purchase an external USB Blu-ray drive. I will link to the ones I recommend down in the video description. But if you want a case that supports internal optical drives, I would recommend the Fantex Enthu Pro M TG ATX Mid Tower Case. This will run a bit more expensive than the NZXT H510, but it's a great choice that looks professional. Very last part, let's cover the power supply, which gives this computer the sweet, sweet electricity that it craves. If you're just buying the base version of this computer and none of the upgrades, then I think you will have plenty of power with the EVGA BQ 500 watt power supply. But if you're buying any of the upgrades or even the alternative case option with a Blu-ray drive, I would recommend purchasing the EVGA BQ 650 watt power supply. This should be plenty of power, but I do want you to be aware that these two previous power supplies are semi-modular, meaning that some of the cables are permanently attached. This can have an effect on the aesthetics of your case when it comes to cable routing. So if you want to spend a bit more and be a bit fancier, I would invest in the fully modular EVGA G3 750 watt power supply. With the power supply chosen, congratulations. That is your approximately $1,500 video editing PC. Of course, there are accessories that you'll need to purchase as well, such as mouse, keyboard, speakers, monitor, operating system. A lot of that is gonna come down to your personal preference. I will link down in the description and on my kit page to the mouse, keyboard, speakers, as well as both a 1080p and 4K monitor option for you to purchase. Because you're building a 4K editing machine, I would definitely recommend a 4K monitor to go with it. As far as the operating system goes, I would recommend Windows 10. And I've included a link down in the description to a Tom's Hardware article where you can read about how to get a copy of Windows 10 for free or very cheap. With that, thank you so much for watching. It would be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you wanna see more videos like it in the future. Please do keep in mind, these PC part prices are subject to change and these parts can go out of stock very quickly. If anything looks too expensive, or goes out of stock, please let me know and I will update the part link with a new option. Lastly, I also have a budget video editing PC build guide that is significantly cheaper than this one, as well as a maxed out video editing PC build guide that is more expensive. Both of those guides are linked down in the video description if you wanna watch them. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.